Welcome to Dare to Leap, a conversation and community supporting women just like you to gain the freedom, flexibility, and financial security you desire and deserve with CEO and founder of Virtual Expert Training, Kathy Guggenauer. This is Dare to Leap, and now here's the powerhouse tiara-wearing Kathy Guggenauer. I am here today with Tamara Zantel. She is a mother to five superstar change makers. And you're not going to believe what else she is a licensed mortuary scientist. Yes, you heard that right, mortuary, with a degree in business management. She worked for over 10 years as a management consultant and small business strategist in both the medical and restaurant fields. What a combo. That is, that is an amazing combination. In addition to 15 years as the chief operating officer for the largest medical specialty practices in Western New York. As an official corporate dropout, oh, join the crowd, have five on corporate dropout, love me some corporate dropouts. <laughs> Tamara helped her nine-year-old daughter, Zandra A. Cunningham, turn her kitchen table hobby into a million dollar brand. Oh my gosh, I have to hear more about that one. She is committed to supporting parents as they transition to parent managers and learn how to better position their children to explore their huge dreams, establish reputable businesses and build their family legacy. Welcome Tamara. Hey, hey, thank you. Thank you so much. I'm excited to be here. Great to have you here. How very timely this is because I cannot even tell you how much I've been thinking about the legacy we leave for our children and our grandchildren these days. And what you are doing for the next generation is amazing. So tell us how you got here. How did you create all of this? Because you, you've combined mortuary, medical, restaurant, Ooh, baby, yeah. fill us yeah. in. Yeah, absolutely. So it has indeed been a journey. So the, the goal initially, right, coming out of college was to go to like med school and um, take over the world of um, obstetrics. That's what I wanted to do. And I, you know, like most college students was like, okay, if I'm going to keep stay in school, I have to be able to take care of myself. And I was working all these jobs. I've always been a really hard worker. And I heard that mortuary science, you get paid really well, you know, and, and it could be a transition kind of career for me as I went into medicine. So I was like, I'm going to do that. And then the fact that my parents are pastors, so my father was always in church doing funerals. Like I was like, there's going to be lots of people around, you know, <laughs> to, to, to mortuary science. So uh, it just yeah, kind of, that's a smart decision. Yeah, wow. it was actually, and we actually um, thought about it at that time. It didn't work out, but we talked about opening a funeral home as a, for the, as a family, as a family. And I decided, I was like, I don't really want to stay here where I'm from Buffalo, New York, from Boston, Massachusetts originally, but I went to school in Buffalo. I was like, I don't know if I want to stay in Buffalo. I really want to move and do something different. So we paused the funeral home experience and, um, and then I, I moved away. I, I graduated from mortuary science school, completed that part. But then I was like, I don't really want to open a funeral home. So I started working part time and just getting into the business and, and I actually really loved it. But I just I realized that more than doing the work on the back end, I love managing and running the actual funeral home. So it was like I wanted to be in the front. I wanted to deal with the families. I wanted to make decisions, you know. Um, and so from there, I went into I, I well, I got married, had children, <laughs> life happened and um you know, I needed a job because, you know, we ended up getting custody of our three of my cousins. So at the time we had eight kids in the house. It was like, like literally, and I skipped over it fast, but literally this all happened like three, eight. Years. It, oh yeah. We had gosh. eight kids in the house and it was, it was chaos <laughs> and a shock. Cause I was like 23 years old, you guys. So like, I'm not, you know, like, yeah, I was 23 young. with eight mm -hmm. children. Yeah. Oh my gosh. It, yeah. It was a whole situation. So I was like, okay, let me get it. Let me go out and see if I can make something happen. So I, I was like, I need to go back to school. I had all these decisions to make. I got a job working at a chiropractic office. 
And I fell in love. I fell in love with just the idea, like physiatry and, you know, modalities and all these different things. So I started working part time within a year. I was managing the practice. So that kicked off this whole I meant to manage human capital and, you know, be more of like an executive support. And I, and I had this boss that really taught me a lot where he was terrible at organizing, managing people, setting up systems, but he had great ideas. So he would come up with the ideas and I would implement them. So that's how I ended up managing specialty practices and restaurants because he was also a restaurateur. So, wow. Yeah. So over the course of like, over the course of that 15 years, we built million dollar medical practices in addition to restaurants that were significant in our community. Um, and I did everything from choosing the tile, um, the, the elevator that was going to be installed all the way to the menu. So it was a whole situation. So that's why it was like a whole array of things. Now, while all this was happening, Kathy, my daughter at nine years old <laughs> in 2009 decided I want to learn how to make lip balm. And I started, mm. you know, I was paying attention to her. She, what her, her real love was makeup. She was like, I, I want to wear makeup. I want to be amazing and look like, you know, the people she saw on YouTube. I'm like, eh, you're nine. That's not going to happen the way you think it's going to happen. But what we can do is maybe shiny on the lips and maybe come up with some natural things. And um, she really just dedicated all her time, effort and energy into figuring out how to make her own. So I decided that I was going to order a kit for us to do together. I'm like, okay, mommy during the weekend, this is going to be great. I worked a ton. So all the time I could get with the kids was, you know, I valued significantly. We made a kit, we made uh, 12 lip balm from this kit we ordered. It was like two weeks it took it to come. I remember it seemed like forever for her. And <laughs> she took the, she took these pink bubblegum lip balm to church, um, to my father's church, gave them away a lady gave her a dollar for one. Well, I, I, I would never forget it. We got into the car after church on the way home. And she was like, mom, I need to know how do I get more dollars? And I was like, <laughs> well, what do you mean? She's like, well, you know, I got a dollar for a lip balm. I was gift giving it away, but she gave me a dollar. So that means it's worth money. I want to make more money. And I'm like, so what you're talking about is starting a business. And she was like, yes, that's what I want to do. So we made a decision that, that idea, that nasty pink bubblegum lip balm <laughs> that we made, <laughs> was gonna, I was going to help her turn it into a thing. So over the next couple of years, we started, um, I enrolled her into programming so she can learn how to actually formulate skincare. We started making lip balm and body butter and sugar scrubs. Neither one of us to start knew what we were doing. It was just we just, I just went all in. She said, I want to be famous. I'm like, okay, you want to be famous for what? She's like, I don't know, but I know I'm going to be famous and I want to help girls. So oh, I'm like, okay, wow. well, let's see how we can combine the two. And as we work together and then also outsourced and brought other people in, once I realized that this could actually be a thing, like we could actually build this into a real business, um, it just started to take off from there. Well, where is it today and how can people get it if they want it? Oh, so today, uh, Zandra <laughs> is a whole, we have successfully built an empire and I'm going to tell you it's a full family empire. Um, we went from that moment making a decision to rebranding the entire company, hiring help, um, you know, I grabbing onto everything we didn't know how to do so we can master certain things within our gene zone of genius. Um, and now Xandra is in stores all over the world. She's in over 700 Target stores. She's in Whole Foods wow. and grocery stores oh all over oh the, the Northeast. Um, yeah, it's a whole situation. And Xandra's now 20. So <gasps> it's been 10 years, 10 years it took us to we grew this company into a family, a full-fledged family. That's amazing um, that you did that in, in 10 last... years. That's, yeah. I think that's fast to do all that in 10 years, especially when someone is only nine years old. Right, right. <laughs> and, and, you know, when I look back at it at the moment, it just seemed like it took forever. But when I look and now I sit where I sit now and talking to you now, I'm like, well, really, that kind of, it did kind of happen fast because we rebranded, we rebranded the company in, in 2015 and then renamed the company and just came out with a whole new mission and everything. So that 
rebrand really kicked us off in, at, in high gear. So we started operating at a different level at that point and um, it just took off. And that's when 2016 is when I became a corporate dropout. And I was like, you know, I'm building these million dollar restaurants and medical practices and all this stuff and doing all the things. It was literally, Kathy, became my dream job of what I thought because I was managing and creating and building and doing all the things that I love to do. Um, you know, at a high level. And I, I thought I was done. But then I started looking at Zandra, the business. And I'm like, you know what? If I can do that for these companies, why can't I do that for our company? And so I made a decision. I handed in a 90 day plan. And I was like, I want to be out of here in 90 days because my daughter's business needs me. And that was the turning point. When I came onto the company full time, it, it, it really took off. And now it's, it's, it's what I do. It's what we all do. <laughs> yeah. So could you, uh, first of all, let's just get one thing out there and then I want to come back and ask you a question about this. So the name of the brand is now Zandra. So her it first is name Zandra. is the name of the brand. Yeah. Okay. Z-A-N-D-R-A. Correct. And um, does she have an online website or is, you know, going Absolutely. Whole Foods Absolutely. the only way to get it? So okay. no, we have a strong- So what is that? Okay. So the website is zandrabeauty.com. Zandrabeauty.com. Okay. Cool. Uh, we sell on our own platform and also uh, through, you know, hundreds of vendors. Mm -hmm. It's so exciting. So I'm going to tell you right now, well, of course, we're going to put that link in the show notes. I'm going to be going there as soon as we get done here today to check it out. Um, and I probably need your, if your daughter's really good at this, I need her to do a total makeover on me because look at me. I need oh. a lot of help. <laughs> You don't need as much help as you need. You just need to let that hair flow, girl. That's it. <laughs> I, I am 64 years old and I have no idea how to, how to put on makeup. Okay. I don't. Wow. First of all, I can't believe you're 64. <laughs> so shout out to that. Uh, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I'm not a big so, makeup person either, Kathy, but I will put on some lip gloss and just make it happen. <laughs> you look Thank beautiful. You. you look absolutely beautiful. Um, it, when I put it on, like if anybody, well, this is going to be on YouTube. So if you're watching this on YouTube, just click through any of my other videos and laugh as you do, because you will go from <laughs> one crazy looking makeup session to another. And I did it all. And every time I think <laughs> after I see the video, I think, Oh my God, what were you thinking that day? <laughs> and then there's some with no to, makeup. It's hard to see ourselves, Kathy. It's hard to see ourselves. Oh my I'm God. I'm sure it's not it that bad. so hard. <laughs> oh, it is. <laughs> like, um, did you ever see the funny, uh, well, I'm sure there's a lot of people that do this, but um, Elaine from Seinfeld did a funny thing uh, during COVID where she like put her lipstick on and it was like all over her face. That is literally how mine looks. And I didn't mean to do it. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's funny. <laughs> I know. It's, it, all right. it's a good thing. I have a good sense of humor. In fact, um, I asked my, I asked my videographer, uh, Edie Clark, she's brilliant. I said, could we like put together what looks like a blooper roll for my YouTube video and just have like me from when I was because I've been doing this for 20 years. So 20 years ago when I was thin and not wearing any makeup <laughs> to, you know, when I started trying to wear makeup and as I aged and as I gained weight and just put those really funny ones up there. And she's like, no, we cannot. No, we cannot. <laughs> the evolution, the evolution. It's like, Listen, that has nothing to do with your wanna, business. You want to see the real, the real evolution of Kathy. Like this is uh, from then to now. <laughs> It hilarious but Edie was right she was like it has nothing to do with your business and I'm like it would make people laugh and she's like I'm not sure it would make well, people laugh they might I mean, just feel sorry for you you know people build major brands on just their authenticity and sharing the behind yeah. the scenes of what the real real is like you know that's what we're missing Thank online you. today that's what we're missing well, I'm about as real as it gets at all times tomorrow. If you have you know, I know, I know. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So um, what I wanted to go back to was, first of all, I wrote a couple of notes. Your parents were ministers, mm -hmm. both of them or your both dad and your mom. Supported? Both of my both parents of are pastors. Yes. So that we have that in common. Mine were also. Wow. And so I know what it's like to be a preacher's kid, a PK. Mm -hmm. PK. 
And it's especially bad when both parents are ministers or especially good. Right. But I don't know about you, but I got away with everything because they weren't paying attention. Yep. That's about right. <laughs> they were who was he dealing with all the other people and saving oh, everybody right. else and helping them. So we were kind of like flying under the radar. <laughs> exactly. There was an assumption exactly. that we were doing things right. So you know, yes, mm-hmm. there were assumption we were really, really good because we right. were the PK. Right. And the reality was I got away with mm-hmm. when I think back, I wonder how I'm still alive, quite honestly. <laughs> <laughs> I have those same thoughts. I have those same thoughts. But it's yeah. so I think you're a lot like I am in that while you didn't end up becoming a minister yourself, and neither did I, we still have that DNA where we're sharing a message and have mm-hmm. this mission. Would you agree that you that you still have that level of passion? Do you ever hear oh, yeah. your father or mother's voice coming through your voice where, you know, you can hear them preaching and you can hear you almost preaching yes, as you yes, share? Yes, absolutely. Um, anytime I'm sharing with any of my my clients or if I'm doing a live stream or I'm in a caught up in a moment, an interview like this, absolutely. I mean, it just comes right out of you, you know, and I think that's why that's what's one of the sweet things about, you know, having a strong voice um, and growing up in a home and, or around people that use their voice and that demonstrate their passion so significantly. So, yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because um, I literally I can hear myself. Um, I don't know what my parents were um, Pente- Pentecostal Assembly of God and then Southern Baptist. Um, yeah. minister so fire and brimstone up on you know behind uh, oh, the pulpit. yeah I, I understand that very well <laughs> I understand it very, very and sometimes well. I get I get so passionate and I hear my voice and I'm like oh my gosh and literally about the time I think that somebody will type in the chat preach it and I'm thinking <laughs> yep. oh they hear it too I get that they too like too. oh she's preaching today I'm like oh <laughs> can't help it it's all right I gotta tell the truth yeah <laughs> Yeah. So that's such an interesting um, because there's not a whole lot of people who have both minister, both parents as ministers. So I'm really glad that we discovered that. Yeah. Um, And then um, I know that you have uh, other programs where you help um, people like you helped your own daughter go from idea to shelf ready program, your accelerator program. So could you talk about that a little bit? Absolutely. So when I, what, I, I just want to go back a little bit, Kathy, if that's okay. So sure. um, once I stepped into Xandra full-time and we built a full team and we became a full-fledged family manufacturing business and, um, and, 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 and company, because we have multiple different uh, parts of the company where we do private label for other small businesses. And we have a whole manufacturer, even th- during COVID, like the government was like, you have a manufacturing facility in New York, you're going to make hand sanitizer. And we were like, okay, because <laughs> we had the equipment and everything to do it. Um, so it, it became a, it, it is a major operation. But in, in 2017, I remembered, I was reminded um, by something I said in 2012. And I remember thinking, because this process of raising a child that starts a business, you know, um, the process of being an entrepreneur in general is very lonely. But when you're nine, 10, 11 years old, it's extremely lonely mm. because it's, it's, there's no other kids. Well, there were no other kids for Xandra around her that was doing what she was doing. And me as a parent, at the time, a parent manager becoming one, I couldn't, there were no other parents for me to connect to that had a child. They were sports moms, hockey moms, dance moms, all the other moms and dads around, but none of their kids had businesses, right? And if they did, it was like the lemonade stand or we were just doing this thing on the weekend. It wasn't something that they wanted to develop into their family legacy. So I said, if I ever can get Xandra's company, if we grow this business big enough and people care enough or are enlightened or inspired by it enough to ask me how I did it, um, I would share freely. So in 2017, I started Raising a Mogul. So Raising a Mogul is my parent manager platform where I support other parents who have kids in business, who have kids that want to start and grow businesses. So we have a full Facebook group um, community. And I did that for almost two years 
before I even decided to offer them anything because I was like, look, we're all here together. Let's just group hug and be excited <laughs> that we found each other. The world's so huge and we're doing something so unique. So we have kids in the group that are active, like on daytime TV, kids that, you know, are running million dollar brands and kids that just have an idea of just, they're, they're just looking for the opportunity to start. They're all there. So um, the accelerator program came directly from that community from parents saying, okay, you and Xandra did this, this, and this. We want to do the same thing, but we don't even know where to start. So my mission with the accelerator is taking them from idea to shelf ready product or service, right? Um, and, and through the whole process, because running, starting a business is hard, but starting a business with your child and with your child, you accepting your kid as the CEO is a whole different experience. So I realized that our community needed a unique experience, a hands-on experience, um, and to be and then also be connected to other people doing the same thing. And my goal, my mission with the accelerator is to help them do what we did as a family with Zandra in half the time or less. That's my promise. I love that half the time or less. That's amazing. And to have somebody, I know the value of having somebody who's been where you want to go mm -hmm. to help you not make those expensive mistakes, time mistakes, money mistakes, and to accelerate your success. So I love that you call it your accelerator program. Um, I don't, one of the messages that I find very um helpful in sharing with others when they think, for example, my very own husband, when I started my business, he said, you don't need to hire anybody to help you with this. You're smart. You've got this. You've already worked in corporate world for 20 years. You have an MBA. You've got this. Well, guess what? Mm -hmm. I didn't have it because I had never had an online business. I'd never had a business at all. And you know, the number one reason for failure or success of any new business is that founder's previous success in business, in wow. that business. So when you have never been in that business before, you're going to fail if you don't ride the coattails, learn from someone like you who has been there and done it and can guide them. I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree more. Mm -hmm. And I know that those of you that are listening or watching this, if you think of the process that you've gone through, not until you realize I need help with that, or I need to find someone who's, who's actually an expert in this thing. That's when the movement really starts to happen. We struggle. And I know this because with our family business, you notice I said we relaunched in 2015. So all the way up into 2014, I was trying to figure it out. I was leaning on my own understanding, Kathy. I was like, I yes. built a million dollar practice. I did this in the restaurant field. I did this, <laughs> I did this, but I had never done this. And even if I had, exactly. it was a whole different experience that I, at the time, wasn't even willing to admit because I was like, I got this. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> this. I had that ego, ego too in the beginning. It, that's it yes. right there. Ego, ego. And mm -hmm. once I, I had to get it in check, I had to get it because it was too. holding me back. It was holding us back. Me too. Yeah, yeah. And I wish I would have figured that out earlier because I, I could be so much further already. I, I don't regret. Um, I'm glad I learned when I did because mm -hmm. um, I've seen many, many hundreds, probably thousands of people who never figure that out, who yeah. never get the help that's needed and they never succeed. Absolutely. So, I totally agree. Yeah. And it's at two different levels. So there's one thing where, like I can say with us, we invested into a coach, into a consultant. We, I was like, look, she wants these products in Target. We need to know this process. Like, what do we need to do? Like, how do we, you know, FDA compliance? There were so many different things that I wanted to fast track. Cause I'm like, we don't have time to dilly dally. We just need to get to where we need to get to. So there's that level. But then there's also the level where it's like, okay, I need an assistant. <laughs> I need a VA. I need an executive. I need somebody else on our team to help us do all the things so that we can grow and I can operate in my zone of genius while they operate in theirs. So that was another big lesson I had to learn that I could not keep it all on my desk. You know, I had to outsource and start to look for, for help, you know? And a, and a lot of us think, 
the business has to be this big or we have to make this much money. We tell ourselves these things before we can outsource or look for help. And that's just not simply not the case. Like you're not going to get to the business you want, you think you need to get to <laughs> if you don't outsource and ask for help or hire help. Yeah. I had myself muted and yeah, I was like, I, had myself figured, muted. <laughs> I saw your face. I was like, she figured it out. <laughs> My dog was running down the stairs. I don't know if you heard him, but his no, I didn't were hear running. Him. And I'm like, I need to mute that. So they don't hear my dog. And then I forgot I was muted. So sorry about that. Um, so, uh, you know, a lot of people will, will, and I'm sure you've heard the same thing. You know, I can figure this out on my own. I just like you, the mm -hmm. two of us, we've, we've had these amazing We've got degrees. We have all this background. We've got yeah. this. What people don't know is what they don't know. They exactly. can't Google. What do I not know about uh, creating a beauty empire? You cannot mm -hmm. Google that and find out the information. Absolutely. And I think it's important yeah. for us to do our own, you know, SWOT analysis in a sense, and really just be honest. And you know, the other thing, Kathy, I think is important to mention here is social media works against us. And when you're in this phase, when you're first starting out, you have this amazing idea, no matter what kind of business it is you're building, social media will keep you in the dark <laughs> in, in, in regards to thinking, like seeing what it really is like, because not a lot of entrepreneurs come out and say, well, I only made this much money this year because I built an amazing team or I hired amazing people, or I had to first sit down and write out what I'm good at and what I am not good at and bring in, you know, support or help or, you know, what I, I just don't think that level of, um, you know, transparency is, is, is out there as much. So That's when people right. want to start something, whatever the business is, they go look at where they want to be five, 10 years from now. And that person they're watching, they're not sharing the journey. They're not talking about the steps it yes. took to get here. They're just, we're just looking at yeah. the highlights and we're like, I can do all that this weekend. And it's like, uh, no, <laughs> <laughs> need to calm down <laughs> and not even and they're not even working with you to know uh the pitfalls and the things to do right <laughs> exactly yeah and and you know i'm i love that they have the courage and the and the and the drive but you also have to have uh the ability to, to acknowledge when you don't know what you don't know right Exactly. And, and if it, even if you're brilliant in the space, there's always somebody else that knows a little bit more and that can bring you a little further. And we cannot discount the um, the value of having an amazing community around you either. When you have other right. people working, pushing, pulling and running alongside you, um, mm -hmm. th that's invaluable. Invaluable. Yeah. Yeah. Like you and I are in a mastermind together. We that are. is a really amazing mastermind. Yeah, absolutely. It is. And that is a huge community that really supports each other. And, and just like your community, just like you support your community and I support right. my community. Um, so I think that's one of the things that some people don't realize is, you know, uh, as hugely successful as you've been tomorrow, you still need support oh, because totally. it's lonely at the top. It's lonely at the top and I want to go higher. And yes. I, I, as we go higher, what do I say? More money, more, more problems, <laughs> you know, like every That's round right. it gets harder. So my, the problems I had two years ago or even six months ago, don't even, I can't even like, they mm -hmm. don't even compare to the problems I'm going to have in six months. So I need to That's constantly right. be leveling up and surrounding myself around people that are going higher, that have been there, that have experienced more. Um, so that I, mm -hmm. I can lean on them and ask questions mm -hmm. and get the answers quick. This, oh my goodness, being able to get a quick answer like that oh, right no. there is worth yes. whatever program you join. Like just so you don't have to, I mean, cause you could probably figure it out, but is it worth the next three months trying to get the answer that you can get in three days or three yeah, hours? Exactly. You know, exactly. so I just, I, exactly. I, my goal is when I speak to, when I talk to parents or, you know, upcoming entrepreneurs or people that are passionate about launching something and getting out there to help people and making their impact. It's like, just do what you need to do to get to where you need to get to now, instead of all the behind the scenes fussing and rewriting it and rethinking it and overthinking it. Like, 
look at who's there who has had great success. You know, we all have to do our little backgrounds, make sure you like the, the integrity. And, you know, the online streets can be a little, little something, you know. But once you discover who that person is for you, attach to them. You know, soak it all in and invest at the level you need to invest in and just get what you need and leave the rest. That's my thing. Mm-hmm. Like all, like when I started, went full force, force with raising a mogul, I was like, I need to get what I need and leave the rest. And all the distractions, I need to focus on everything that's in alignment with what I say I want to do with my business, with our family mm-hmm. business. And mm-hmm. I stay focused on that and everything else takes a backseat. I, I love that. I love that. Um, just to give you another example, like a lot of people on the outside looking in would say, oh, my God, these two ladies, they just have it. You know, they know what they're doing. They're driven. Yeah, we are. Um, do we ever make mistakes? I know I make mistakes. Um, <laughs> and sometimes they're expensive mistakes, even though yeah. um, and I learned from them. What did I just hear? Lionel Richie. On, I love Lionel Richie on, um, um, you saw him so, on something <laughs> recently. Yes. Oh my goodness. I can't believe I can't think of the show. Um, it's the singing competition. Oh, oh is it, it the, um, the mask, the mask, or is it not, no. not the mask here? He's on the, um, the, the voice is it the voice. Mm-mm. No, but I watch all of them. <laughs> Can you tell I like those shows? Um, American it's Idol? The, uh, American Idol. American That's Idol. It. I'm He's like, American I, there's Idol. only so many. I'm going down the list. <laughs> Keep guessing. <laughs> Sounds like American so Idol. Because I can see him sitting on the stage. I'm like, I can see him. Like, what is this yeah. called? Okay. <laughs> yeah. He just said on American Idol, um, if you win, you win. And if you lose, you learn. Yes. And I was like, oh, I love that. Yeah, that's because good. that is so true. And I don't even like to use the word lose that much, except for it's it it's so clever the way he said it, because that's right. exactly right. If I make a mistake, yay, because I'm going to learn from it. But I also don't want to make tons of mistakes because then you really slow your growth. Absolutely. And one of the things that I've learned recently, um, you know, I, I really feel And I want to get your feedback on this too. I really feel blessed because, you know, I have the background of being a virtual assistant, training virtual assistants, having my own team. That's how I run my whole business is with virtual assistants. And I thought, I got this. I know exactly how to build a team, exactly how to run a team. And I had a couple of people like in our mastermind group saying, when you hit a certain level, your team will break. And I thought, not my team. I have built an awesome team. My team isn't going to break. And sure enough, sure enough, guess what happened? It broke. My team broke. And I was, I cried. I was devastated. I'm like, you know, (laughs) but I only had a pity party for a few minutes. Because that's what we do. (laughs) I'm like, okay. If you guys listen to what Kathy's saying, she's saying, we make mistakes. We have bad days, but they last about that long. That's right. And then we pick ourselves up and go, all right, now what am I going to learn from this and how am I going to fix it? Number one, I now know, while I know more than most people on the topic of building teams, I don't know everything. So thank goodness I'm in mastermind group with you and I continue to learn. So how about you with your team? What, any tips, tricks, uh, any Uh, challenges that you've had that you've experienced that you can share with others? Yes. And do you have, other than your family, who's right there, do you have a virtual team or? Yeah. So we have a virtual team. So raising a mogul has a virtual team and Xandra also has a virtual team. So, um, I would say with Xandra, I've learned the most lessons because as raising a mogul is becoming a a big girl, it's growing up. Um, I'm, I just started expanding our team more so at the end uh, last fall, but Xandra, our team has been rocking and we actually just hired some new people in the last week. Congratulations. And, And we, thank you. And we've had that experience. So really what I had to learn and, it, and it's a tricky one because we are a family business. And so everyone essentially, even though we have non-family member, non-family employees, we operate as a family. You know what I mean? It's very mm. personal. So being yeah. in the space, even online, even with my executive assistant, I talk to her almost like every day and we do face-to-face meetings every week. So it's like, I care about her. She cares about me. So it's, it's a tricky situation when you're trying to manage, you know, humans that have families and feelings and emotions and and if you don't have the good good systems in place so i would say i had to learn 
um, how to be a better manager and how to admit when I was wrong, Kathy, you know, like when, you know, if things weren't yes. working, if we have three team members that are struggling with one area of our production team or um, inventories off or equipment or something's not working, I need to be step up as the operations. I'm the CEO of, the, of Zandra and say, you know what, there's something wrong with the system, right? Maybe my SOP is off. I'm not paying attention. They need more of something. So being able to slow down and look at where things are breaking or where things, the communication is off, whatever it is, and, um, and accept ownership for that. And then talk to my people, right? And say, how can I make this a better experience for you? What did you experience? What happened? How do we move on from here? As opposed to being like, I know the problem. I'm going to fix it. I got it. I decided, <laughs> I decided, you know, like, no, I used to be I used to be her because even though I had certain things I, I was trained to do and I, um, you know, I, I knew how to manage in, in when I was in corporate, but coming to Xandra, it was like first me dealing with the fact that my kid is my boss. That was new. <laughs> and then <laughs> So Xandra is the CEO. I was going to ask you that. Yes, she's absolutely. Wow, CEO. that is. How, yeah. How, how she handle that? How she handle being at that level? She, she, um, she is extremely, uh, graceful it but oh, sometimes she could be a handful because <laughs> it's like it was a transition so this was so this is where I'm I, I was getting to like being home with the kids and her and everyone and then it's like she has to do dishes she still had to clean her room like there was still rules you know what I mean she started driving <laughs> she bought her own car so she's doing all these very adult like things but you're still uh -huh. my baby. But then at work, mm -hmm. I have to sit in a meeting with her while she tells us how she wants things to run or while she says, wow. no, I don't want to launch that line. And I'm like, well, why not? I put all this work into this presentation. And she's like, but I don't like it. It's not what I want to do. And I'm like, wow, that's a mean? whole new level yeah. of complexity yeah. that you have to deal with. And yeah. you're uh, members of your accelerator program and raising a mogul, they are so lucky to have you Thank because you. I can't imagine trying to do all that. Yeah. On Managing all that and me <laughs> as the employee, but then also I'm expected to show up in front of the rest of the staff <sighs> and I'm doing schedules and creating systems and yeah, it's a whole thing. So I really had to learn how to humble myself. And, and really the other thing is boundaries and respect. I had to learn how to master that. I wasn't so great with the boundaries because of the whole family aspect. So sure. if I treated my brother a certain way, if my son is the uh, fulfillment manager, um, Xander's older brother, so if he got treated a certain way or was allowed to take a larger, larger, larger lunch, longer lunch or I responded differently if he made a mistake versus you know just a different and another employee, I had to watch mm -hmm. that. So I had to yes. just operate as if we were the, the, the huge corporation that I knew we were heading to be. And as soon as I respected that and, and everyone else came on board and we put in all these boundaries, now it, it works, you know? But in the beginning, it was like, oh, okay, we're all friends and family, but no. <laughs> wow. Well, um, I already loved and respected you, but that just went up like a hundredfold <laughs> thinking about having to do that with family because Thank I tried you. working with my husband for one week and we almost killed each other and we never worked <laughs> together again. Oh, God. <laughs> I don't know why I thought the one was going to be like a year. She said one week. <laughs> wow. Okay. One week. And we well, almost didn't make it that one week. I'm not kidding. Listen, you. It was horrible. I am gonna, there is something to be said with those of us that can make quick decisions. It's like day two. Um, this is not working. You got one more day. No. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. 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 And he was relieved. He part of the problem was he really didn't want to do it. It wasn't his passion at all. Yeah, so, you know, I just I important. thought. Yeah. But, you know, like you, I thought, let's keep it all in the family. Let's all make some money. But yeah. when the other person really doesn't have that same dream and that same drive as you do, it's not going to work. Absolutely. So I totally admire agree. you and your family because uh, you. honestly, I'm, je I'm a little bit jealous. I'm a little jelly but here. You, about. But you know, it, it, it was a journey for some of the other kids because not everybody was on board. You know, my sons are, mm -hmm. are athletic. They're, you know, they're actually football, professional football players. So everybody has their own passion and, and zone of genius that they're walking in but Xandra's kind of like our our um our meeting space 
you know, um, and in my younger, Xander's younger brother, so Josiah, he was like, I want to write books. I want to design jewelry. I want to be a photographer. I want to do music. So he does all kinds of things and that's fine. But when he wants to come, when he comes home and he wants to be involved and he's like, I need money for whatever, go to this, let's go clock in. You know what to do. So we always have a way where oh, they that's can fabulous. Take, yeah. So that so it's worked for him that way, whereas he doesn't have a permanent position mm-hmm. because he's just not interested. He's just mm-hmm. like, I'm not that into it. He's like, that's Xandra's thing. And we're like, OK, so we have to respect it. Once do again, you have any boundaries. Do you have any openings for grandmas? <laughs> I, could, I would like to apply. We actually we do. <laughs> we do. <laughs> Especially those that wear tiaras and come into work looking out cute and spice up the floor. Yes. <laughs> your family is just amazing. Um, I, I, how proud do you feel of what you've created with your family? Oh my goodness. It is like, I'm just so grateful. Like that is my word. I'm so proud, so honored to be connected to these humans and that they they put so they they put their all into make to building this family legacy because like you said it could be different when everyone has their own direction but i would i like to say that we've created this amazing um uh ecosystem where everyone can still be their individual amazing self and explore and buck the system every now and then but we still come together for this this common mission you know, because we understand that this is our family legacy. It's no different. So what I what I call it with my, with my community, Kathy, is this is our family farm. So even if you don't mm. want to milk the cows or go get the <laughs> chickens or feed the pigs, we all have to g- get to dinner, right? So we all want to mm-hmm. eat tonight at six. So we all have to do our part or we don't have dinner, right? So we have to work. If we don't work, we don't eat. So this is how significant this legacy is. And this uh, business has afforded everyone else, all the other kids, an opportunity to build and branch off and do their own thing, you know? So, oh, so um, there's something to be said for when you can raise your children um, it, it, to have their own, to know how to make oh. and multiply money, right? And understand wealth for themselves. Yes. And, they, and they have an option. If, if one of my kids, if James, Josiah, Mercedes, anyone decides, you know what? I'm just going to go get a job. I'm going to go work at Target mm-hmm. or wherever. Go ahead, mm-hmm. have at it. But you also know how to create your own. You know how to build your own and you know what it feels like to have your own. So yeah. as long as they, they know they have options, I'm good. That is so amazing because um, you sound like in so many ways, uh, what you're striving to do is exactly what I'm striving to do. You're doing it with families and children and parent managers, which I love that title parent managers. That's, that's what I'm always talking about too. You know, a mom will come to me and say, you know, I would like to be a VA, but I don't have any skills because all I've been is a stay at home mom. And I'm like, that means you've been a CEO and a manager. Yes. And they're like, what? Yes. Yes. (laughs) Perspective, perspective and giving us the credit, giving ourselves the credit for what we actually do. And until they meet you, they don't even look at it that way, Kathy. So that that's, Mm -mm. that's good. And you too. Um, So I have a question for you. Okay. Do you ever struggle to pat yourself on the back? And because every time I kind of bring this up, you go, yeah, my family, my kids, my this, my that. And I haven't, and I know it's hard to say, yes, I I did this, Mm -hmm. but the reality is you did this. Your family (laughs) is the way it is because of you. Leave it up Do to you Kathy. ever struggle with question. that? <laughs> Tough question, Kathy. Okay. No, yes, I, I do. But you know what? I recognize it. Um, oh, good. This actually, this is new for me in the last couple months, actually, because um, I've had se- several conversations and people are like, well, you and you. And actually, I was at a, a, an event not too long ago. It was a virtual experience. And someone was like, oh, so you own Xandra. You're the, you, you're the company Xandra or whatever. And I was like, oh, actually, that's my daughter's business. But I just told you it's a family business, right? Like we're all hands uh-huh. in right. knee deep in this thing. Right. But yeah, I didn't right. own it. So so yes, yeah. I'm working through that. But that's once again me being the parent, me staying back, mm-hmm. standing back, knowing how to do things, but just letting my kids shine. So I'm 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 owning it. I'm owning it, Kathy. So absolutely. I had right. a lot to do with it, right? And um <laughs> and I'm excited about it and I'm proud of it. So yes, yes. I had a lot to do oh, with I'm not so only glad. Zandra. 
uh, building her business and that's now become our family business but also the fact that my sons are rock star you know football players and my other son is an artist you know like yeah so yeah Yeah. that's amazing (laughs) um you know I work with I work with yeah thank you I'm so glad you patted yourself on the back she's literally (laughs) patting herself on the back yes Uh, because I mean you know it's it's true and we women we have a hard time doing that yeah, we really do. Men, they don't seem to have such a hard time. They'll take the credit morning, noon, and night. But women, they're like, it was my daughter. It was my son. It was yep. my and they'll, this the men worker. Will take the credit it was even luck. They don't fully deserve the credit. They're like, oh, I was involved mm-hmm. in oh, that. Yeah. My name was yes. there. I was in the room when that happened. Where we're like, oh, well, technically, I built the entire thing, but it's okay. <laughs> it's okay if they didn't mention me. No. Yeah, we need. Yeah, those I know. I hear my. Over. Mm-hmm. I hear my husband talking on the phone every once in a while. He'll say, our business, our business. And I'm I'm glad he feels connected to it. Right. But he ain't worked on this business other than <laughs> that, those five days. <laughs> Listen, interesting story. We had that actually happen in our household because Zandra's father was totally hands off. He thought, oh, this is a nice little hobby. This is something, you know, this is cute. Like he was doing his big consulting, you know, thing and he didn't have anything to do he didn't want to have nothing to do with lotion and soap like right until mm-hmm. Sandra we went to uh Etsy flew her to Brooklyn New York for Etsy open call and she won oh, wow. her first six-figure contract <gasps> oh and my gosh we that's were so there. exciting it was amazing Kathy so listen we're there with um ABC Nightline cameras in the face because she won she won she won the wow. this young, youngest to ever win ever it was thousands of people all over the world they bought 36 businesses to etsy to pitch and they chose 10 they gave away i think i think they gave away three golden purchase orders and she was one of the three wow so here we are standing in like the lobby of etsy headquarters and it's crazy and it's exciting and he's standing there with the camera the mic in his and he's like yes yeah, so our business and we're super proud and we've been and i was looking at him like who is this who's this guy <laughs> what is this guy talking about <laughs> so that night <laughs> that night he says to me you know this is actually a real business you <laughs> <see?"> <laughs> i was like <laughs> You think I've like, had those exact words used. I exact couldn't believe words. it. I was like, you jerk. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, so this is what I think. So the next day he's like, so I'm, I, I wrote some stuff out and I got a plan. I'm like, oh, you're, you work, for, you work with us now. You're part of the family business now. Oh, okay. I just opened the door. I held the door open for him. I'm like, come on in. You could be a part of it too. Oh, now you cannot so tell generous. him. You can't tell him that Zandra, you, if, if you let him talk long enough, he'll probably tell you that it was his, he was the one trying to make lip balm in the microwave. <laughs> <laughs> he owns it yeah. so much. So <laughs> my, my, um, you know, I've, I've been in business since 2001, basically doing the same thing in the VA industry ever since then. Wow. Yes. Things have grown and shifted, but that's how long I've been doing this. And I've been the sole breadwinner for my family wow. um, since then. And a, F- a Forbes article came out two years ago about my business and Whoa. my, my uh, thanks, my family read it and they called and said exactly what your husband said oh, this is a real business. And I'm like, what do you think I've been doing all these years? See what I mean? <laughs> See, like, I don't know what these what the rules are for a real business, but it's like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I'm like, you want yeah. me to pick up yeah. the tab more? Like, what, what do I need to do? <laughs> like, how do I, <laughs> you know, what, what, how do we express real business? But yeah. okay. Right. But that's why we have to pat ourselves on the back. Yeah. And, and because- right. Really, there's not anybody else going to do that, right? Right. You're right. You're right. Yeah, and we, yeah. and, and I'm so I'm working on that. Like I said, it's, this is a new development for me. I'm com- stepping out of my comfort zone because I'm used to being the, you know, the one that to push people off the cliff. And now it's time for me to jump and fly myself. Um, so, yeah, I appreciate you asking me that question. <laughs> so, anybody else out there who is uh, thinking, wow, I would really like to do what what Tamara is doing. I would like to create this kind of family legacy. What is the first thing you recommend they do or the first couple of things that you recommend they do? Hmm. 
So the first thing I would say is um, find us on Facebook. <laughs> find the Raising a Mogul community on Facebook. I agree. That's right. the first. I was yeah. hoping you would say that. Yeah, was the that's first the first thing. thing because before I can, because I can talk about mindset. I can talk. You know, there's all kinds of things I can. I can tell you what to do. But the first thing is to submerse yourself in an atmosphere or in a space where you say you want to be. Because there's nothing more valuable than watching, reading, seeing other kids, other families build their legacy in real time right in front of you, you know, and having the opportunity to be connected to those those families, those parents and listening to the fact that, you know, today was a terrible day or I we applied and we didn't get it or we we invested and we only got back 10 percent. But then the next week, it's a whole different story. It's an amazing win. So that atmosphere alone is invaluable and it will give you the push you need and help you make some preliminary decisions about how you want to operate your own family business um, right from the beginning. And then the next thing I would say is uh, have a conversation with your children, you know, pay attention, look at what they're spending a lot of time um, doing? What would they rather do than hang out with their friends or play video games? Um, whether it's taking things apart and fixing things, if it's dancing, if it's singing, if it's writing, if it's reading, whatever it is, and then have that conversation and, and, you know, and, and talk about the sacrifices, you know, the good, the bad, the ugly of turning this idea, this passion into an actual business that is meant to make money. And I say that on purpose, Kathy, because a lot of us think it's cute. You know, our kids, it's like, oh, she's eight and she's making a business. It's like, yeah, but the first thing I teach the kids in our programs and, and the parents in our programs is like, look, businesses are supposed to make money. The more money we can make, the more people we can help. So we're here to make an impact, you know? So um, that initial conversation is very critical. And it might be a series of conversations because your child will change their mind. Um, you're going to change your mind. You're going to think, you know, I don't know if I want to do this. This is, I, I, I can't, all I have is one day a week. Well then be honest with that one day a week and see what you can do with that. You know? So that would be number two, the conversations, right. And getting real with what you're willing to do and not willing to do. And then number three is, um, look around you and whatever, once you have the idea, start looking at other people in that space and figure out how you can stand out what you can do that they're not doing and how you can do possibly what they're doing, but do it differently, you know, um, for in this space and really all spaces for entrepreneurs, competition is so fierce. And a lot of us don't feel like we can bring something unique to the table because it's like, well, I'm just selling one or two, or I'm going to have t-shirts. So either it's two things that happen. Either you, you, you don't believe you can bring something new to the table or you assume what you have already brought to the table is super unique and it's not. So really doing that, compare, <laughs> like I, I'm here to tell the truth, Kathy. I'm here to tell the truth. So, yes, I you hear know, you. You gotta look at it and really understand what your brand stands for, your why, your mission, your core values, all those things. And then look at your competitors and, and figure out where you sit in that market and how you can shine and stand out above everybody else. You walk in the grocery store, tons of water, but you know which one you like. Tons of butter, tons of yogurt, tons of whatever, but you know which one you like. So you wanna be the one that your people like. How are you gonna do that? So that just, just doing all those, those three things right in the beginning, you can do them in 30 days <laughs> and you'll be off to a good start. Yeah, you absolutely can. And no need to make a logo or anything like that yet. <laughs> you notice I didn't mention Don't any, spend of that. any money on that kind of stuff. Nope, nothing. You haven't spent at this point with everything I just said, you have not spent one dime, oh, but you mm -hmm. have invested some time, energy, effort. And, and that's where yes. you should start when you're building a brand. Well, I really appreciate you talking about this and sharing. Oh, you just, you, you are so full of great information and inspiration. I could talk with you all day long. So I'm going to tell you what, if you are up for it, I would really love to have you come back because Absolutely. one of the things that I would really like to talk about that we haven't had a chance to talk about yet is building wealth. Mm. Because I don't know about you, but I did not come from a wealthy family. I don't I know either. any wealthy people. Yeah. Um, and so we didn't have any role models growing up. Yeah. To teach yeah. us that. Same here. Same here. Uh, so would that be a topic you'd be interested in? I would love to. I would love to come back and talk about that. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So anybody who's listening to this right now, 
post in the comments and let us know. Do you want to hear more from Tamara? I know I do, but <laughs> post and let us know. Yes, I want more tomorrow. And if you want, and I don't mean tomorrow as in tomorrow. I mean, <laughs> tomorrow Zantel <Me. laughs> and is wealth a topic you'd be interested in building wealth because, uh, you know, I, I have a lot of passion around that mm -hmm. um, because that is how we change the world. And Absolutely. tomorrow you've changed your family's world. Thank you. Congratulations. On Thank you. That. Thank you. I appreciate that. So we will um, wait to hear from all of you in the comments to let us know that you want Tamara back and then we will get her rescheduled. And I appreciate everybody listening in. And thank you so much, Tamara, for being here today and sharing all of your in insights. Thank you so much for the opportunity. I had a great time. Thank you for listening to Dare to Leap. Say hello and access additional resources at virtualexperttraining.com. There you'll be able to connect with Kathy to share your feedback and join her community. Join us again soon on Dare to Leap. Until then. Mm -hmm.